And well it's here, well it's here, welcome folks, welcome to another Freaky Game Friday. I'm your host Grandmaster Scott A, and today we are doing something pretty freaky, and something pretty close to my heart. This is the original beta to Crash Bandicoot 1. Now, I love me some Crash Bandicoot, and this was the original beta disc made in around 94, 95, before the game came out. And... Just to warn you off the bat, this does not have any music. It has sound effects, but doesn't have any music. Whether or not that's because the ROM itself doesn't have any music, or it's just a format that it was downloaded in, I'm not sure. But as you can see, the title screen is a lot different to how the actual game is. Like, in the actual game, you have Crash Bandicoot running to a screen. And let's see, we have our options here. Stereo, sound effects, controller, stuff like that. But we are going to start the game. And you can see the first big difference right off the bat. Um, instead of it being in a 3D style, the map is actually a drawn sort of map, like, you know, hand-drawn, I guess you could say. Well, not hand-drawn, but you know what I mean. But the first level, we still have that. The loading screen is also different. We have Insanity Beach to start off with, and... Uh, this beat level's pretty much exactly the same how it is in the original game. As you can see, Crash doesn't really look any different to how he did in the game. Still, he's got no analog control, but you've got eight-way movement. Still spin. It's worth noting that, I'm not sure if it's just because of the ROM, or, you know, the beta, or whether or not I haven't played Crash Bandicoot 1 in a while, I never noticed this, but for some reason Crash Bandicoot feels a lot more floaty, like, see, like that. You, like, you start moving forward, but he'll keep moving, like when, especially when you spin. So it could make going over pits pretty difficult. But, like I said, this is basically the first level. It's not really that different. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there are no gems in this game. Like, I don't know whether or not they just didn't have those as a fort yet, but... Uh, whatever, but... As you can see... Pretty much the exact same game. I mean, I am a massive Crash Bandicoot fan. It was like one of the very first games I remember playing. I remember Crash Bandicoot 2 came out the same year I was born. So, and the first Crash Bandicoot game that I remember playing was Crash Team Racing, which came out in 99, if I'm right. And just, I have all the Crash Band Bandicoot games, or, or at least, oh, Continue Box also. There's a lot of difference in the other game, it says Checkpoint. But we have invincibility. It's kind of weird having invincibility without the invincibility music. Anyway, as I said, I have at some point in my life owned pretty much all of the main series Crash games. Like, not the handheld games, because well, they suck. But I have owned all the console ones, even the, um, the spin-off games, and even the terrible ones that they did as the last two games. Like, you know, the Crash... Or the Titans, I think it was called, which was... Bloody terrible. Well, it was. I guess I'd say it was. It was all right, but it wasn't a crash game. I always hated this bridge. That's why I always hate that bridge. Suck at it. Um. Can't want load up. There we go. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot has always had that place for me. That's one other thing I was found annoying with the first Crash game. Spinning the box doesn't immediately give you the icon. You have to pick it up. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 1 is probably the one I least return to, like, from the quadology, I guess you could call it, of Naughty Dog games, with 2 being my absolute favourite out of all of them. I'm not going to bother going for all the boxes, seeing as there's no point, but... Uh, just to tell you that I might do a Crash Bandicoot Let's Play some... Oh, come on! I swear, it's, it's not, not because me sucking at the games is causing the jumping problems, but... I swear it's not like this in the original game. So, a little backstory, I guess, on the um, on Crash Bandicoot as a whole, I guess. Um, also, this thing is different in the other game. It's like an orange swirl. And, anyway, like I said, this game originally, Crash Bandicoot was not a Bandicoot. He was a Wombat. Uh, I think his name was like Willy Wombat or something, which, you know... Not exactly the best name in the world. Um, and the game was in development for a couple of years. It was nicknamed the Sonic's Arse Game, because, you know, 
you're facing the behind of the character, so you get a good look at uh, Crash's ass. And what do we call it? The game came out '94. I think it came out like a couple of months after. It's like Super Mario 64, so that was kind of like a big standard to live up to. And this is basically just a Mario game, but played with the camera in behind you instead of to the side of you. You can really see it in the later levels when you get like one block fin platforms and stuff. But I'm not going to be doing the whole game. Um, basically, we're just going to be going up to the... Um, what do you call it? The end of the first island. I may do like a follow-up if you really want me to in the future, but as for now, we'll stick to just the first island. Boom! Um, as you saw earlier, we picked up like a token thing, and that basically would... That, if we get three of those, it'll take us to the bonus room, because this is the only game where bonus rooms are not... Oh, for God's sake. This is the only room where bonus rooms are not gotten by, you know, jumping on a bonus room platform. You have to actually collect free tokens. And in the original game, they come in three flavours. You get the Torna tokens, which is the one we picked up and span away, sadly. Which, um, basically just take your regular bonus room. That's how you saved in the original game. I don't think this game has saving. I think it just has passwords. And the other two are Entropy ones, which are, well no, Embryo ones, which are difficult ones that give you more lives and stuff. And then finally you have the Cortex ones, which give you keys to unlock the bonus levels, and those ones are the, well, the secret levels, I guess that you should say, and those are the hardest ones in the game. I have never actually 100%ed the original Crash Bandicoot, because of the fact that, compared to the other games, it is a very difficult game to 100%. Pretty much, in all the other games, if you want the gem, for example, you need to get every box in the game. But in Crash Bandicoot 1, you have to get every box in the game, well, you have to get every box in the level, I mean, and you have to not die in the entire level. If you die once, boom, that's it. You have to start all over again if you want that gem. And Ooga Booga. Time first to go super. Once again, kind of loses something when you take away all the... Oh. Ow. <laughs> It's funny. So, damn you monkey, damn you turtle, and damn you piranha plant. And compared to Crash 1 and Cra Crash 2 and Crash 3, this game doesn't have as many power-ups as the original. Like in this one, all you get is just jump and spin. Crash 2 would add the slide and the belly flop, and Crash 3 would add like the bonus stuff that you can get, like the jump, like the double jump and the bazooka and all fun things like that. But, you know, the original Crash has its charm, it's just... I think the best way to sum it up is kind of like... Playing Super Mario Bros. 1. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just that the sequels are much, much better. Do you see that? It just blew up the steel block. Hey. Oh, there it is. That's funny. Um, so we've got mossy platforms. Oh, can't grab the life. Another thing to mention, the life text does also look different in the other game. Oh. This is the first zone of the game. This game comes in three zones. You get this one, which is kind of like the tribal zone. Then you get the ruins zone, which is all like temples and stuff. And then you get the cortex zone, which is all like industrial plants and factories and castles and stuff like that. I always like these spikes on the jungle. I've always looked cool. Whoa! Oh, come on, get the token, get the token. There we go, bonus room time. So I can at least show you what a bonus room looks like. Come on, load up. Come on. There we go. Now, in the original game, uh, this would be what the... I think this is what the Cortex ones look like, or the Brio ones, I can't remember, but in the original game, the Torna levels are all in, like, the treetops. So, that's something worth mentioning. Probably should tell you who Torna is exactly. She is that girl. And there's a pass our password, I guess. <laughs> okay, these things kind of look like knockoff brand stickers. Um, Torna in the original game was Crash's girlfriend. 
who they had to remove from the sequel games because they thought that her design was kind of a little too risque and too adult. So in the sequels, the female of the games was replaced by Coco Bandicoot, who's you know Crash's sister. And the cano canonical reason as to why Crash uh, Tourner Bandicoot wasn't in the games was because apparently she ran off with Pinstripe Portaroo, who's a boss in this game, who's a mobster Portaroo, which I'm not even sure what a Portaroo is. Somebody will tell me in the comments. Oh, and we have a hog. And these are the hog riding levels. There are only two in the original game, not sure how many are in this game. And it's very much you just ride around and smash things and don't crash into stuff. Simple to understand. I always like the, the music in this level. It's like, um, so I remember it was I'll stop now. Jump on the drums. There we go. Uh, this sort of level would become a staple in the Crash Bandicoot series, with two giving you a polar bear and three giving you a tiger and a bike. Well, and we just got thrown off. I never, I never trusted Crash's face whenever he'd do that with the the hog. Oh, god damn it! Looks like they're wearing like a bowl on their heads. It's funny. So on the hog. I have to say, I do prefer Polar as a riding animal. The hog didn't really have much personality, but the later games would... How the hell are you meant to get the gem for that? I guess... Well, I can only assume that this is before the gems were a thing, but come on. How are you meant to get them all if you segment the box totals like that? Oop, over the hog. And into t Oh, for God's sake. Come on, load up. You can tell this game had a bit more refinement as the time went on. Much for the better, even if in the original game it is still quite a hard game to be, and compared to the sequels, which, you know, I'm not going to say toned down or anything, that's kind of a bad tone, but became more balanced probably be the better term to use. So, over the hog, under the hog, past the spiky things. Over the final hog, come on, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Oh, fuck! God's sake. Come on, I will make it to the end of the first island. I'm not going to be beaten at the hog level. You can't even jump over him. Come on, you can do it, Scott. Don't doubt your idol, Crash Bandicoot, who seriously needs a return. Do you know, tell you what, Sony, if you're listening, and you're probably not, I can, do you know how you can make some money? Crash Bandicoot HD Collection. Just do one, two, and three in a you know fancy HDness, and then release Crash Team Racing as like an online kart racer. Trust me, you would make squintillions. They'd have to invent new numbers for the money you'd make, and for fuzzing else's sake. Come on, I don't normally suck this much. Damn you, recording curse. Okay, to the side. To the side, get the boxes. Oh, bit of lag. Got the stuff. And over the pig. To the side, to the side. Grab the box, under the pig. Side to side, jump. Okay, now when I get to the women, I'm gonna try and go the other side. Oh, for fuzzing hell's sake! How are you meant to get past here? What am I doing wrong? Alright, let's try this again. Maybe it's because I'm jumping, I don't know, just jumping slowly down? I can't really tell. You know, I'm not even getting enough boxes to refill my apple count, or wampa fruit count, whatever you prefer to call it. I always called it apple count, even if it didn't look like an apple. Shut up. Okay. D look how are you meant to do this? Is there a speed up button that I'm missing? I swear, I don't remember the hog levels being this difficult in the original game. <sighs> Dang, I ran out of lives before I do anything. It's gonna do a save state so I don't have to do all this again. Okay, to the side, to the side. So, this is why you watch me for the pro strats, don't you? Because, <laughs> after all, 
Because no hit run, no death run, nothing like that. So I'm always perfection. But then again, the purpose of these things aren't to show off the games. And, uh, well, they're to show off the games, not to beat them. Is that going to be game over? No, wait, no. It's one of those games where zero lives equals one life. I always wondered, always thought that was weird. Okay, boxes. Grab those. Okay, now I'm going to try and stick to one side on this one. It seems to be there's a little bit of leeway there, so if I can just do that, it might let me through. Okay, over the... Now, stick to this side. Okay. Okay, so at least we know that works. Still hear the pig. So, let's go on. Here we go. Now, if I'm right, this would be the level which we would meet um, the first boss, who would be Papu Papu. It's like a big tribal island chief. But instead we get... Uh, I think this is meant to be upstream. Because in the other game they give you level names, which is good. Hello, floppy fish. And this looks pretty much exactly the same as upstream. So, no changes there. On the big floaty leaf. And over we go. These sorts of levels would return in Crash 2 as well. Oh, damn you lag. Bounce, 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 and crash. Fun fact, that's why he was called Crash Bandicoot, because he's crashing through all the boxes and crashing through the levels. Okay, I'll wait for the leaf. And... Oh, for God's sake! <sighs> well, at least now we can see what death looks like. Game over. God, that's like a RPG maker sort of level. Oh, that's different. I'll give you that. But, power of save states will prevail, so... We'll just do this part of the hog level, seeing as we know how to do it now. And we'll get back to upstream. Then we'll do another save state just to be safe. Okay, under the pig, side side jump. Uh, over the pig. Jump and stick to this side. There we go. All right, now let's try that again. And we go. Okay, come on. So, just thinking about more to talk about. Um, this was not Naughty Dog's first game. But it was uh, their first game for the PlayStation, I believe. Fully wrong on that, but somebody will tell me. Um, like, they did do a few games for the 3DO, I think one was like Where the Warrior or something, which is like some weird 2D fighting game that they did. Uh, whether or not they did anything earlier than, than that, I'm not sure. But Crash Bandicoot is... Oh, for, for sake. Crash Bandicoot 1 is where they hit the big time, I guess you could say. Um, and they would continue to do the Crash Bandicoot series up until Crash Bandicoot 4, where the rights were sold off to... Euro, I think it was Eurocon first, and then Radical Visions, or Vicarious Visions, whatever, whatever it's called. And then after that, I can't remember who the rights went to, I think it went to Activision or something. Oh, for fuss sake. Like I said, it's very slippery when you're running and jumping and crashing and stuff. The spinning seems to be what does it, like it delay, like it's cancels out the running motion. Well, I mean, it cancels out the stopping motion of the running, I mean. Okay, on there. Jump. Jump. Spin. You see? Cancels it out. Because I definitely hit the jump button there. Okay, stop. Spin. That's with the empty boxes. I'm guessing there's a lot less fruit in this game than compared to the other ones. Okay, on the leaf. We can do this. I do have um, one more beta. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa! See, nearly did it again. I do have one more beta lined up, which I have acquired. Which is either going to be this freaky game, the next freaky game Friday, or like the one after it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What was like this part? Oh, did you see that? That was like a no. 
I jump on it, it's like immediate bite. How the heck are you meant to deal with something like that? Let's try this again. We'll do a safe state this time. Okay, on the leaf, up we go. It's probably boring for you to watch, I'm sorry. But now you can see why I don't do a lot of, what do you call it, extremely difficult platforms. You're not going to see me doing I want to be the guy or anything. Because trust me, it'll be 40 minutes before I get past the first level. Okay, I'm on leaf. And leaf. And then, okay, jump on here. Now I'm going to do a save state, because I just want to see if this flower... See? Oh, that time it didn't immediately eat me. It's being annoying. Okay, up the river. God, this game is weird about music, like I said before. It feels... empty. Whoa! Oh! Come on. See? What is causing that to happen? Is it because I get the token? Okay, now I'm going to try it without getting the token. Jesus. I definitely slowed those things down for a later release. Okay, on we go. So it is a feature length episode of the Freaky Game Friday. Okay, jump. And those ones I remember, they just bite continuously, so you gotta wait for your chance. And. Now. Phew. Oh boy, I am not going for that. Okay, got that checkpoint. And hop! Jump! And on we go. Oh. Okay, now we can do this. Jump. B lives! We have lives! Screw you, monkey. Oh, fuck. Fuzzing thousand hell's sake. Okay, one. Do 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 do. Um, just trying to think of what to say. Um, tomorrow, which will be Saturday when you're watching this, um, is when two important things are happening. Number one, the next LP is going to be starting. I have that all recorded and that's all in the can, I guess you could say. And also important will be the two-year anniversary of Grandmaster Scott A from the first video that I uploaded. So, um, fuzz. so for everybody that has watched me over the years and everybody that has supported me, um, thank you. Here's hoping we can make 2016 a bigger year for all of us. See if we get some more people in. Can only hope. Um, jeez, I really am running out of stuff to talk about. Um, how are you? Are you good? All good and happy? Content? How's Easter going for you? How about that weather? Yeah, when you've gone through a level about five times, there's only so much you can compliment on the leaf, leaf design. Okay, I missed my chance there. Okay, let's try this again. Ready, piranha plants? Yeah! Jump! Jump! Oh, for ah! <sighs> Try it again. Hates the bloody spinning physics. I can see why this beta never never made it out of the beta hood because definitely needed the, the refining it needed. Jump! Power through the lag. Spin him, away we go, come on, come on, come on. This episode's gonna be 40 minutes by the time I'm bloody done with the first island. Let's 
So Crash Bandicoot, I would definitely say that Crash 1 is not the one that I'd recommend you jumping right into... Oh, for fuzzing hell's sake! Crash Bandicoot 1 is not the one that I would recommend jumping into immediately. I would definitely say to start with number 2. You're not going to really miss much on the plot. It's either recounted in the manual... It's either recounted in the manual or it's recounted in the opening cinematic, which basically immediately follows on from Crash 1, and there isn't really much you need to know about Crash 1. It's basically a very simple, you know, you laboratory monster, you want to be free, go save girl, kill everything in way. Evil science. And Crash 2 basically just follows on, right on from... Ugh. Right on from when Crash 1 started off. God damn it! What is up with those plants? Okay, wait for him to... Oh, for fuzzing hell's sake! I think I might... Uh, too, if I have to save state one more time, I will cut to the end of the level with me reaching it, because I have a feeling like I'm at close to the end anyway. So... No, there's another jump. Come on. Stop. And I hate the fact I'm only getting one apple <laughs> per box and you're not getting stacks of them. Okay. So I will not descend into sweary madness. I am better than that. I'm Grandmaster Scotte, the leader of the gaming revolution. And I will not. Fuck! God! Fuzzing, damn it! Oh, that one didn't fling open immediately. Ugh. Come on, hurry up. Getting annoyed. It's making me miss the game that I played for the LP, and trust me, if you know what game I did for the LP, you will not want me missing it. Okay, wait for it. Oh, f ay, 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 ay. Okay, that's it. Consider this a cut to the end of the level. Consider that done. I will see you in a second. Toodaloo. And we are at the end of the level. Thank fuzzing God. <sighs> anyway, come on. Power through. We can do this. So here we are at the boss. Papu Papu. So, see how different he is. Oh, as you can see, instead of in the original game, he would have like a little portrait and he'd have his name be the. Oh, see? You no, know, what you do is you bounce on his head. We can get hit. That helps as well. And the way you're meant to do it. Just wait for him to hit and then spin him in the back of the head, but there's is another way you can do it, you can just jump on him from the chair. Well you're meant to be able to jump on him from the chair. There we go, down he goes. Oh come on! <sighs> but well, you know what, screw it, I beat him. I class that as a as a win for me. <sighs> I have been Grandmaster Scotte. This has been the Crash Bandicoot 1 beta, which I'm now regretting to play. And I thank you so very, very much for watching. See you next time. Adios, goodbye, and good luck. God, this was terrible.